Bust down Rolly for the hell of it It's my time to shine, spotlights is my element Fuck a plain Jane, don't insult my intelligence I don't plan on selling it, so I don't see the relevance you niggas having porn shop nightmares I'm light years ahead of niggas, even on a light year Don Perignon, stain the laces of my night years Born poor, but I'ma die rich, nigga, life's fair <laughs> Youngest in charge. It's out. Mm -hmm. Gold. Even though they didn't count it. That's that's what every every place that you can look it up on, it says it was gold. Good. I, think right. that's, I just need I my plaque. I think it's way more than they that, They need though. to give me a motherfucking plaque finally, man. 35 years later, give me my fucking plaque. Damn, you still ain't get a plaque, still though? Still ain't get a plaque, bro. That's crazy. Whoever feel, watching this, give this man his plaque. Facts. It's crazy. That's crazy. BMI, ASCAP, whoever you motherfuckers are, give this man his plaque, man. Stop but, but playing. How can I be almost go the first year and we 35 and years And nothing later. else happens. That's what I'm saying. That I mean, demand a recount. I multi-platinum at this right. point. Right. Yeah, I have to. I got to get a recount. Yeah, I, at this point. I demand a recount. Okay. Working on, on legal. Mm -hmm. What was the process? Well, the process was by that time I, had, I bought some equipment. So I was really into production at that time. You know, I had a little setup in my mom's crib and uh, one of my brothers and myself was more so into the production at the time. And still, you know, loyal to how we teed, I mean, to this day. So it was really just about me getting a few joints in on the album with him. Mm -hmm. So I did some production and how we did the album, like, you know, like usual, that was my chemistry right there was how we teed. And um, he basically taught me all of that. He taught me how to produce. And by, back then, we had to use like five different machines. You know, got the sampler, the drum machine, the sequencer, the keyboard. Everything was separate. Right. So, you know, that was a whole process in learning how to produce. You know, now everything is in one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But back then, you had to understand MIDI, yeah. SMPTE, how to connect well, all the connecting. machines together, how to make them sync and play together right. and make music, you know, in that in that way. So, you know, how he taught me all that, you know, he, he had the patience and I, I had the time. I sat there and watched and asked questions. And then by that time, I started buying equipment after the first album. After my first check, I reinvested into my career, into my business. What did that first check look like? Um, probably like it was like a buck and change. It was like a hundred something thousand. It was supposed to be closer to five hundred thousand, but I went up there and pss, people thought I couldn't count. You feel me? Mm -hmm. If I'm going up there and I know my sales is close to five hundred thousand, I know I got like twelve points. You know, do the math. That's that's a half a million dollars. Right. So I'm going up there like, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm going to get it. I go up there and. I knew something was kind of funny because he made a slick comment talking about, man, I never had to pay somebody so young so much money. So I'm mm. like, man, you pay mm. me my money, man. Like, and he gave me the check and it said a hundred and something on it, like a 120 or something, 125. I was like, yo, this is a little short, man. Where the rest of my bread? And he was like, well, we got to figure some things out. And, you know, we had some expenses and this and that. And I'm still counting. I'm like, well, y'all ain't spend. Four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, let's figure it out. You know what I'm saying? He must have thought I was playing. So, comes to, you know, time pass. I ain't getting my money, and I'm getting tight. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of money, especially for me. You know what I'm saying? Especially at that age and that mentality. You know what I'm saying? That's real. That's real hurt somebody money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking for my money. And um, I had to end up taking him to court hmm. and going through that process. So we went to court over that. And I ended up um, recovering some money. But by then, they went into all kind of claims. They had their books together, their expenses, you know, their fees, this, that, and the third for everything. They had the videos, everything. Everything was recoupable. Mm -hmm. So to me now... I'm looking at this whole thing like, damn, I'm doing all the work. I'm making all this music without y'all. Y'all not helping me make the music. Right. How he's doing all the beats. We're the talent. We're the reason that they can sell 
five hundred thousand records. Right. You understand? And y'all not trying to pay us. So that's where I had the big problem. I felt like, yo, if I worked in Mickey D's for a year and they ain't never pay me, would I still be working there? You know what I'm saying? So the mentality was like, yo, they trying to drag me. They think I'm stupid. They trying to, you know, and then I already went through the ghostwriting scenario where they wasn't paying me for the for my work. Right. So I felt like, yo, this shit is all real shady. It's a matrix. Yeah. Right. So I wasn't really trying to have that no more. So we went to court over that. And um, they also had me wrapped into a situation where I had three albums, but they had an option each album. So it was really six. Mm. <clears throat> so I had to go to court. That's crazy. Get that cut down. And, um, you know, they took advantage of a minor, not knowing the industry. And the court system don't know the industry either. Well, you were spending money to fight. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm spending the money they, they giving me <laughs> to fight. And they ain't even giving me all my money. money. Right. So right. it's like disrespectful. And, and that's how I started looking at the industry. Like, oh, y'all on some disrespectful shit. Y'all can't even give us the little percent y'all agreed to. Agreed agreed to. to. Right. right. And then not only y'all giving us the small percentage, but y'all want to recoup all the expenses. From that small percentage. From that small percent. So that's when I was like, nah, this shit ain't really cool. Right. That's not how... And that's when I kind of changed my my passion for the shit change, you know what I mean? In terms of being on that label, you know? And I tried to, you know, get off. They didn't want to let me go. Um, I wanted to go over to Def Jam. I asked Russell and uh, Leo to get me off. They couldn't get me off. They couldn't even get Run DMC off. Because mm -hmm. that was Russell's brother. They, they was at war with them to get them off. Right. They couldn't get them off, so they was like, they got some ironclad contracts. Damn. Ain't no way out. So I was kind of stuck in the situation. I tried to make the most of it. Right. At the same time, though, you know, they had the control. Were well, they taking a percentage of your show proceeds? Nah. Not that, back no, then. It was all records. There was no 360. There was no merch. My merch was my merch. They had merch that they gave away for promo for free, like special ed. We had legal t-shirts. They gave those away. I took some on the road. Um, but nah, it wasn't like that. All my show was my, my money. Touring, that was all my money. Yeah. But, um, but then sales was a big portion of your income. Right. Because um, the show money was like, well, what, what was a rapper back then doing for a show? Shit. Shows was all right, you know what I'm saying? But see, I had a big crew too. I had like three dancers. My hype man, my DJ, my road manager. At first, we started taking security too. Mm -hmm. So I had probably like seven, eight people on the road sometime. So yeah, it was challenging. You gotta pay all of them. Yeah, gotta That's pay everybody. Fact. So trying to make sense of that. So, you know, it was all right, but you know, after that kind of cut down, it made a little more sense. I was putting a little more money in my pocket. Then um, at one point when we went back to court, I felt like the management needed to go because they didn't look out for my best interests. Mm -hmm. right. Y'all put me in this deal. Y'all put me in this situation. So when I kind of got at the label, I kind of got at the management same time. Like, look, so I dissolved that agreement. So that, you know, then I, since then I've never really signed back with a management. At all? At all, period. So I've been really managing my own shit for, for like forever. For the last at least 30 years, almost 30, you know. Mm. And um, it worked. You know, I saved the 20%. You know, sometimes I probably could have um, gotten, see, because I'm, I'm less, I'm less, on top of everybody type like I'm not in every party every scene every place social. I'm not, right. yeah yeah right. I'm not the social butterfly all the time so right. so you're you know, missing out on opportunities that yeah. somebody who is social would have would have been able to get a hold of yeah a management but see you have to get a management that you can not just trust but that has done something that could do more than I can do for me mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I don't want to go into a situation where they're learning curves and they learn in the business. Right. Like I already know the business. 
get me somebody that's there. And I never really came across nobody that's there. But what I do is I always compensate people for any opportunities that they bring. So, you know, if people, I've given a lot of people chances to, you know, represent me in situations, like mm -hmm. almost like an open contract. Right. You know what I'm saying? So in that way, I gotten a lot of opportunities and things that, you know, I might not have got on my own. But, you know, I, I pretty much navigated this industry on my own for a long time. And then I started booking other artists, like a booking agent. Mm -hmm. I started doing that and getting other people work, getting them opportunities and shows and, you know, eating that way, too. So almost mm -hmm. like management, but not quite having to manage. Because right. to me, I don't even really want to manage nobody because... I got to be responsible for their livelihood, their careers, their right. income. Mm -hmm. And I'm concerned about my yeah. livelihood, my income and, you know, my shows and stuff. So, you know, I just keep it at booking. So this way, if I have an opportunity for you, I got some income for you. Cool. But I don't want to be responsible for your life and your, you know, kids and your family and all that. You feel mm -hmm. me? So, you know, I, I've been doing that. That's been working out. Now I'm doing a lot of curating, a lot of uh, shows, putting together packages. Um, we're getting ready to put together some real big concerts this year, too, as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's been working out. You know, I like doing that because then I get to still participate in, in the industry that I love, but... I ain't really got to deal with all the headaches. Right. It's, it's headaches on a different level, but that ain't no headache for me. me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got people around that can handle shit. It's, it's kind of like managerial, but, you know, less stress. You right. know what I'm saying? So I just do that. And, um, you know, my artists, they, they, they love it. They love when I bring them opportunity. They always check for me. Yo, man, what you got? You, got some, you know what I mean? And that's about it, man. Like, I, I, I stay on that kind of plane right now. Now, if you, aside from you basically creating the look of the Fresh Prince on a legal cover. <laughs> well, see, the profile did the that. The first, the right. first. Yeah, but, but that wasn't my choice. The greatest feeling in the world was holding my own gun. I'm hypertensive, but all my decisions been wholesome. My independence had me flipping on siblings I stole from. Said I'm just big and loud. Well, half a pound is my silent treatment. I punched out plugs, I could've stopped from eating. Stash of the Prada, shy nigga got up. Gun in the mass in the grass, it's a pop up. I was Robin Hood with the stock, don't get shot up. Now I'm watching Robin Hood in my stocks, they just shot up.